私の記憶が確かならば私には20世紀中に叶えることのできなかった一つの夢がそれは歴史に名を残す料理と出会うことその大きな課題を残したままついに新世紀が訪れてしまったのだそして今私が最初に手をつけなければならない大仕事それは21世紀料理始め早速私はそれを飾るにふさわしい料理人を世界に散らばる歴代挑戦者の中から選ぶことにしたその選出根拠はただ一つ新しい料理に対する意欲の強さそして私は新世紀のキッチンスタジアムを間違いなく揺るがす2人の男を選んだのであるさあ全世界の鉄人ファンよ新世紀の幕開けを告げる全く新しい料理を22世紀まで語り継いでみるがいい The 21st century battle. Iron Chef fans in Japan and the U.S. have been eagerly awaiting this day. Wait no more. The day has arrived. Let's introduce our distinguished guests who will be with us for the battle here in Kitchen Stadium. First, actor Takanori Jinai. Hello. Next, actress Kumiko Akiyoshi. We welcome Sydney Olympics gold medalist in judo, Tadahiro Nomura. Hi. Lower House member Nobutero Ishihara. Hello. And commentator Dr. Yukio Hatori. Hello. Thank you all for being here. All right, new dishes to celebrate the opening of the new century. We're looking forward to them. And now I give you our chairman. の記憶が確かならば新しく突入した時代は21世紀地球の料理はこれからどうなっていくのかその潮流をこの料理始めに託そうではありませんか<笑>その答えを出してくれるのは彼らしかいませんもはや私だけのものではない地球の財産早速登場させましょう21世紀によみがえるがいいアイアンシェフ Ascending into Kitchen Stadium year 2001 Your Iron Chefs Opening a new era in culinary history It's been a year since they last battled here Welcome home Iron Chefs He first fused Japanese techniques with French recipes Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai Versatile, creative, he surpassed his father's legend, Iron Chef Chinese Chen Keiichi. He spearheads the Neo-Japanese cuisine movement, Iron Chef Japanese Masahara Morimoto. And youth on his side, Japan's Italian cuisine leader, Iron Chef Italian Masahiko Kobe. In this new century, these four will continue to break new ground, continue to lead the way in their respective cuisines. Your Iron Chefs! そしてもちろん鉄人は4人だけではありません彼らがいなければこのキッチンスタジアムは生まれませんでしたさあよみがえるがいい名誉鉄人Making their own ascent into the stadium, the men who made it a reality, the honorary Iron Chefs. Iron Chef history begins with these three men. Honorary Iron Chef French, Yutaka Ishinabe. Honorary Iron Chef Japanese II, Komei Nakamura. 
and honorary Iron Chef Japanese, the first Roksamu Ichiba. Iron Chefs, past and present, the Supreme Seven, an astonishing assemblage of culinary talents to greet the 21st century. ニュースイセキ料理始めの挑戦者を誰にするか私は数ある申し出の中から自ら生まれ変わったと宣言するあの男にしました佐々木さん大きな拍手でお迎えください関西料理界のドンカンダラ投手の Iron Chef fans will know this man entering the stadium long arrival of the Iron Chefs, Toshiro Kanagawa. A gracious bow by the big man of Japanese cuisine in Western Japan, but this time he enters the stadium all alone. And what's with the hood? Often a critic of the Iron Chefs, today he gets to put his 34 years as a top Japanese chef to use against one of them. And he's got his supporters in tow and is clearly in battle mindset today. Bye-bye. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
Japanese cooking master Kanagawa, shiny paint, hair shorn, says he's been reborn. His sights set on the king of iron chip, Hiroyuki Sakai. Red Snapper's the theme. Will Kanagawa's dishes shine as bright as his top? We're set. The 21st century battle. Let's get it on. On it, Kizu! Opening gong, bang. The 21st century battle's on. And look at both men fast and furious to the stand. The fastest we've ever seen Sakai get up there. And Kanagawa, too. He waddled up there in a hurry. And now both men getting back downstairs with tradefuls of Red Snapper. The crowd in here. They've been gearing up for a couple of hours, and now there's no holding them back. Both men settling down to the task at hand, and Kanagawa scaling a rather large red snapper and dot. Yeah. I tell you, they look great, these fish. Oh, yeah, definitely top quality. They're about two kilograms of fish, and that's really the best weight for these. Okay, from the floor, Ota, go ahead. Iron Chef Sakai commenting on Kanagawa-san's new skinhead look says it was a bit bizarre when I first saw him, but it sure makes him look serious about taking me down. You know, he sounds a little intimidated by Kanagawa's appearance, and he tried to shake that off by making that mad dash for the ingredients. Oh, yeah. And now about shaving his head, a teary-eyed Kanagawa-san said that without help, Japanese cuisine will lose ground, and I love Japanese cuisine. I want to give it new life. My head is just a humble way of showing the other chefs that this is the kind of commitment they need to help Japanese cuisine survive. Wow, well, that tells you indeed he is committed to giving his all, and even his locks, if need be, and he's got his supporters in tow today. And Fukuza? Yes. Yeah, one more quick note. Challenger Kanagawa has something going into the food processor. It's a combination of yogurt and sake leaves. What? Yogurt and sake leaves? Okay. Oh, my. <laughs> and... Whoa! <laughs> Slap that snapper head right down. Kanagawa's jacked up at the start. I tell you, the adrenaline is pumping. Ooh, the snapper looks like it's still alive. Still quivering over there. Ooh, jumping out of the water. A dancing Fukuza. duo, these two. Yes. When I Chef Sakai heard the report about the Challenger mixing yogurt and sake leaves in the blender, he became very interested, saying, I'm curious, I wonder how that'll taste. Well, Akiyoshi-san, uh, have a guess as to where the mix will end up with the snapper? Yeah, I wonder where it will end up. Maybe in the stomach, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> mix it up in your stomach? No, no. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, let me give you the list of ingredients. The Challenger has chosen to go with the theme ingredient, of which he has three big ones he says are top quality. He also has white radish sprouts, tomatoes, lemon, wasabi, and two kinds of prawns. He tells me he plans to make four or five dishes today. All right. Thanks, and with Red Snappers, the theme thought you might be interested in Sakai's record when he's got fish as a theme ingredient. Won't be good news for Kondagawa. Sakai's 12 and 0, undefeated with fish themes. That's why he's picked up the moniker Fish Sakai. But uh, Kondagawa is a man who knows everything there is to know about fish, so it won't be a day at the beach for Sakai. <laughs> now check it out up close. Double-barreled chopping action on snapper fillets by Kondagawa chopping to his own beat. Looks good already. And the iron. Chef, looks like snapper head on grill. Yeah, that will be getting rid of the fishy smell. Maybe he'll be preparing a broth later. Okay, another way of masking aroma. Fukuza? Yes. Yeah, I asked Iron Chef Sakai how many dishes he has in mind today, and he said four dishes, my first four dishes, and my first victory in this new century. He's getting confident. No reason not to be in here. Check this out, Kandagawa. Yeah, this is called nashiwari. It's a cooking slang for head splitting. It takes a lot of strength to do that. Flexing his muscles, getting physical, while also artistic. And by the way, Nomura-san, your favorite snapper dishes are? Uh, me, I like carpaccio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a little surprise, that's all. Yes. Mm. Red snapper carpaccio. That's so? <laughs> All right, now on Kanagawa's side. I think this is the double barrel minced red snapper here. Okay, and moving on to here, and oh boy, Doc, is that Omar lobster, French lobster on the grill, Iron Chef side? Yeah, you called it, and that means Kanagawa-san could be using a Japanese lobster to counter, or maybe that would just be too obvious, I'm not sure. Omar lobster checked by Isayabi. Okay, and there, grilling action by the Challenger. Oh, looks good. And accordingly, mmm, we're enjoying the appetizing aroma of red snapper on the grill. That is wonderful. By the way, these two have battled once previously, Sakai and Kanagawa back in 95, the Lotus Root battle, Sakai coming away with the victory, so there's a score to settle for this man. Fukuzan! Yes. You're probably curious about this mixture that the Challenger has just added to this pot. Yes. It's a combination of two types of prawns, pork cuts with lard, ground pork, kelp broth, and minced red snapper, all of which was ground together in the food processor first before being added here. For what? The it's a new huh? broth. A global broth. What? Mm. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, in Japanese cuisine, you rely on dried bonito shavings and kelp broth very heavily, right. right? But in contrast, this is based on ingredients that can be obtained pretty much anywhere in the world. So, a broth over borders? Well, if we're going to get on to broth, Michiba-san's broth is considered the standard around here. Uh, let's ask him about this. Michiba-san? Uh, 
Well, you know, uh, before I comment, let me say he looks good with that skinhead. <laughs> <laughs> and he was mixing a lot of things. Pork, red snapper, uh, prawns. I'm guessing that he'll dump the yogurt and sake lees mix into that. He will? Right. Almost like a stew. Yes. yes. Yeah, let me tell you also about the pot over here on the Iron Chef side, which includes Omar lobster, consomme, grilled snapper heads, and chanton soup in there besides the lobster. Now, this soup is equally as impressive because consomme and chanton together. Chanton is the best broth for Chinese cooking. Kuzan! Yes! Chanton Kandagawa has a big black sheet of paper out, and it looks like he's going to maybe write down his menu. Okay, well, into the cooking. And now back to the Iron Chef. Looks like Chinese cabbage there getting a fry treatment. He's sauteing it in butter. All right. Oh, butter, okay. Okay, and as we see him working it, some bouillon perhaps now being added in. And yes, Kondagawa writing over there is a calligraphy project. Doesn't look like a menu, though. More like a... Um... It's a, like a message or a title. Yeah. Kuzan? Yes. I asked Iron Chef Sakai about his concept today, and he said, well, to be honest, I graduated from pure French cuisine in the 20th century. I'm going to show you a new me today. I'm creating French cuisine with a touch of Asian flavor. Asian French, it'll be something to look forward to. <laughs> All right, we will. Sounds very good. And Whoa, that gets a response from Sakai supporters and lots of ladies up there. Asian flavored French cuisine, and now Kondagawa's done with this. Says New Century, right? Okay, keep going, Doc. Um, snapper dishes for happiness. Okay, snapper dishes for happiness in the New Century, and that meets with the approval from his Kuzan. doctors. Yes. Yeah, Iron Chef Sakai just finished tying a string around a large leek, wrapping it around several times before adding it to his pot. All right, all tied up and somewhere I told to go. You into the stomach. What? I told you, remember, he'll be stuffing it into when the belly. You, uh, what do you, what do Don't you remember what I said? I thought you meant no, mix them in no, your own stomach. No, Same the belly here. of the red snapper. Oh, you oh, saw him cut it in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let me confirm what he's doing here. This is a whole snapper with the bones removed, covered inside and out with a mix of sake leaves and yogurt with edible kelp underneath. Oh, yeah, you can see yep. it right there. Okay, and what he calls a red snapper dish for happiness? So that would be the main dish. The main dish. Yes. What would this taste like? Um, probably a, a wee bit sour. Yes, big fella. <laughs> Iron Chef Sakai is very lightly frying another snapper right now. Okay, just pulled it out and into the tray and back to Kondagawa. Gonna be a salt crust grill there. Yeah. And he's got wakame seaweed underneath. Yeah, that'll match well. Because? Um, well, Red Snapper feeds on wakame, and with the mix of yogurt, sake leaves in it is also heavily used in New Year's cooking, so this should be a great combination. All right, now they're moving that one over to the oven. Fukuzan? Uh, yeah, one pretty much confirmed. Go ahead, Ota. Thank you. I just wanted to update you on all the ingredients used in the salt crust grill. A whole boneless red snapper covered inside and out with the yogurt and sake leaves mix with Japanese lobster, wakame seaweed, abalone, and blowfish soft roll wow. all mixed in. What blowfish a production. Oh, and right. Fukuzan? Go ahead. Yeah, Iron Chef Sakai is using a soft roll too, but not blowfish. It's red snapper roll. That's what you're seeing on camera here. Okay. He's trying to prepare it properly right now before using it in one of his dishes. Got it. Thanks. So he's planning on using every bit of the snapper then. Everything's usable? Well, of course, yeah, the head, even the skin, actually. Okay. 15 minutes have All lost. right, 15 minutes gone and getting a shot here of some of the supporters for Sakai. Again, predominantly women. And Kanagawa, he's got his crowd, too, and almost all of them men. Kuzan! Kanagawa in rhythm. Go! Ishinabe san once said that Sakai doesn't make anything large or bold. Well, Sakai san responded to that, saying, I'm very different today. I'm not making any small, intricate things. I'm going for dynamic dishes, and I'm committed not to using the circle mold anymore. That's a promise for the 21st century. Well, there's some news there. Sakai Kuzan. canning the circle mold. Go! On the other side, Kanagawa san talked about his new global broth, in which the ingredients do look a little carelessly thrown in together, but actually Actually, he's giving this a lot of careful attention as oh a progress. boy, is it loaded. Seems like uh, it could be a key element to his production today. Exactly, and the point is that he's not using bonito shavings or mm -hmm. katsuobushi. Okay, new style broth. Kuzan! Go ahead. The Iron Chef is now using Korean red chili paste. Asian flavoring action for the first yes, time. Yes, right there. Kochu John, finding a place in Sakai's French cuisine. And here, carpaccio? Um, that's what I would guess, but he's surely doing like a fusion style of cooking, and that's actually very popular in New York right now. All right, maybe borrowing a page from the Iron Chef Japanese, and now what's Kandagawa got Kuzan? here? Yes, Chaoja Kandagawa is about to unveil one of his special knives. Check this out. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, and now to unsheath. Oh. 
Oh. Now, what kind of knife, Doc? Uh, let's see, what is that called? Nashikiri. Oh. Uh, yeah, I believe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and hey, giving us a show. I've got one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Chef's not going to let Kanagawa have all the fun here. Kuzan? Yes. Kanagawa's on proudly talked about his shining new knife, which he said he ordered just for today. It's simply priceless, he says. I thought so, yeah. All right, I tell you, Kanagawa certainly garnered some style points so far. And we're not even halfway through. Yes. Yeah, the Iron Chef is now working on his Asian lettuce. He spreads each piece with red chili paste and adds a layer of carrots, asparagus, kidney beans, cucumbers, and serfiu on top of that. He says that he will then wrap it all together in a sliced turnip. That's how it stands now. Back to you. Huh? We're getting hard to hear in hey, here. And Sakai's egging them on. The stadium's rocking the 21st century battle. Hiroyuki Sakai, the king of iron chefs, challenged by Toshiro Kanagawa, the master of Japanese cuisine. Sweat already rolling down his newly shaved head. Much louder in here, and Kanagawa's men, his 50 apprentices, rise to their feet as the 30-minute calls made. 30 minutes left. Kanagawa so far has had a great first half of cooking, slicing, chopping, even dancing. Can he keep it going throughout the second half? And now the Sakai crowd turning it loose as well for the object of their affections. And Jinai san Yes. How about this atmosphere? Oh, I love it. It's like crouching snapper hitting pepper. <laughs> Well, it's par for the course in here. Always like this, huh? All Amazing. Right. Now, challenger side, Kanagawa's some, something's happening here. Uh, charcoal. I think they're preparing the stoves for charcoal okay, grilling. Okay, and now back with Sakai. Now walking away from that one. This is the one lightly fried, right? Yes, that's right, with Korean red chili paste on it. Light touch. Okay, the same. Akiyoshi-san, looking great. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, now back with Kanagawa's side. He is slicing. He's got one looking like a carpaccio as well. See, that looks pretty Kuzan. good. Take it. Challenger Kanagawa has been hovering over this global broth, checking it out repeatedly. He keeps saying, not yet, not yet. And from what I can gather, this is apparently a key element, a key weapon for him in this battle. Oh, that's a definite. Mm, that's try the key that. element. Oh, it looks so good. I tell you, I can imagine and a great Kuzan, taste. Go ahead. Apparently, Iron Chef Sakai thinks so, too. As soon as he heard about the broth the challenger is making, he said that's going to determine the taste of all of his dishes. He knows Kitchen Stadium. I cannot take anything lightly today. Well, for Su Chen's perhaps the best man to ask, and uh, Chen yeah. Sun? Everyone seems to think Kandigawa's broth is key to his chances today. What, what do you think? Oh, yes. Uh, we have a broth called Shantong, and he's added even more ingredients to that, right? He's planned everything out very Shantong. carefully. Kuzan? Uh, thank you, Chen Son. Yes, go sorry, sorry to interrupt, but Kandigawa just added some boiled down sake to his broth. Okay, still more going into it. Not done yet. And you know, if Japanese cuisine starts to use this instead of the typical bonito broth, it'll be much uh -huh. more global. All right, and now a taste test by Kandigawa. No, not yet. Not yet. Nope, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Kuzan? Yes. From Sakai San's side, first he's sauteing turnips and butter here. Thanks, so to anything else? And second, yes, he's prepared two kinds of vegetable rolls. The one that I call the green one is the one that you see now. It's the one with the red chili paste on the lettuce with carrots, asparagus, kidney beans, and serfiu, and further rolled in sliced turnip curls. Oh, turnips in there. Turnips. And the other one is this one, a carpaccio made from red snapper slices, herb paste, salt and pepper, lemon juice, citrus pepper paste, nonplar, and some other uh, herbs that he used to stuff this before he wrapped it further in slices from a special type of potato called hyakon. All right, thanks. And both sides, a little more control of the flowers now. And on Kanagawa's side, an earthen pot on the burner. Yes. Yes, here in the earthen pot, he has water, rice, soy sauce, sake, and filleted whole snapper so far. Wow. wow. Okay, snapper rice. Yep, mm, on the replay rice. there. And how about that Chinese cabbage on the Iron Chef side? Let's check in. Yes, that's the uh, one that's combined with the Omar lobster. Right. And next to that, you can see the leeks tied with string. Okay, the bound up ones. Right, uh-huh. 15 minutes to go. And now 15 minutes left. The 21st century battle, Sakai versus Kandagawa. Both men looking to expand the borders of their respective cuisines. Sakai's French, Kandagawa's Japanese with red snapper is the theme. And Kandagawa taking it off, taking it all off on top, displaying for all his commitment. Sakai, Iron Chef pride at stake. Now, if we look at the challenger, I think he's completed the broth that we've been waiting for here, the one he's been working on. All right. So that's it, you mean, as is? Yeah, if, see that? Look how thick that is. Mm. And away they go. Can you throw away the rest? Mm-hmm, yep. Oh, yeah, that no. won't be served. I can't, 
I don't mind having a dumpling in that. Mm. <laughs> he, he likes it. The flavors found favor with Kandagawa. Fukuzan! Yes. Yeah, from the Iron Chef's side. Uh, into these cups, he's placing the Chinese cabbage, which had been stewed in lobster soup, grilled red snapper on top of that, and now oh, truffles know. have been added as well. Hmm, combo <laughs> dish. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Now over to his oven. And Yes. Yeah, I've got that, too. The ingredients used in this dish out of the oven are boiled Chinese cabbage, sautéed in butter, veal broth, clams, and tuck pickles, together with red snapper, which was uh, fried and flavored with red chili paste. All that was combined and cooked in the oven Great. and just taken out. Oh, wow. <laughs> well... Definitely, he likes it. Uh, okay, so one done from the Iron Chef, and now another one here being flavored. Yes. Yeah, these are the vegetable rolls that I was talking about, in which he wrapped red snapper carpaccio in a potato slice, uh, stacking them like a tower now with the lettuce ten roll on top. To go. Okay, now we're down to ten minutes left in the century opening battle. Sakai and Kanagawa, a heavyweight match. Fukuzan. Go ahead. Kanagawa says that his global broth is 120% ready. He says it's fantastic and that it will maximize the flavors of all his dishes that he's serving today. All right, thanks. And another taste test by Kandigal. And given this one a little more consideration and another, and I tell you, the body language suggesting maybe it needs a touch of fine tuning. And the fans on both sides of the stadium chanting, clapping, cheering. Kuzan. Yes. Iron Chef Sakai is deep frying something here. Let me fill you in on that. The batter is made from uh, flour, peanut oil, baking powder, egg whites, and water. And what he's frying in that is a combination of soft roll of the snapper and the snapper filet, which is prepared in a way that you're seeing on Replay. Mm, Doc doubling down on the snapper. Yeah, the soft roll with the, the snapper along with the meat, and I think there's also some truffles in there too. All right, and still continuing to add that one. Kuzan. Yes. Kanagawa san's oven is open and the soft crust grill is ready. All right, and boy, is he fired up, fist pumping, hand slapping. This is no ordinary salt crust grill. How could it be? With yogurt and thumbs up. All right, right there. turn that green. Yogurt and sake leaves mixed penetrating into the skin and into the flesh of a stuffed red snapper. He is loving every minute of this. And the seaweed has added Fukuzan. some flavors too. Yes, Ota. I mentioned to Challenger Kanagawa that I thought his blade work was very dynamic today, and he responded by saying, I'm not just slicing ingredients here, I'm carving my way into the new era. He is spearhead. Well, if he wins this, it could be the start of the Kandagawa era. <laughs> and Fukuzan, take it. Let me explain quickly what he's doing now. He has a layer of red snapper sashimi covered in onions. Japanese ginger, white radish sprouts, and tomatoes, which are flavored with a sauce made from garlic, anchovies, capers, beefsteak, tomato leaves, and citrus juice and olive oil taken from the grinding mortar. All right, and Kandagawa, check. He is beaming with pride. Capers and citrus juice. That's a unique combination. Yeah, definitely. A nice touch with a little bit of sourness added. And also nice, the effect of the combination of the colors in that Five one. Five minutes to go. All right, buckle up. Five minutes left. The 21st century battle getting down to crunch time. Kandagawa and Sakai both going global in their approach. Go! Kanagawa's on Salt Crest Grill is now being decorated for presentation. Okay, got the thumbs up before on the cooking from its creator, and now they work to get the presentation together. Again, the main one on his side, and Kanagawa ready with some lobsters, uh, apparently to be added here, to complete the color scheme for New Year's. Usually includes red, green, white, silver, and gold. Check it out. A lobster on each side. Red and white there, oh. and silver and gold added, and green in the background. Every color for Japanese New Year celebrations done. Fukuzan? Yes. Mochi, or pounded rice cakes, have now been added to this soup, which I believe is ozoni. Hmm. Oh. All right. Iron okay. Chef side, a French-style New Year's soup. Oh, hold it. A Japanese New Year's soup with Sakai stamp on it. And now... Oh, the snapper rice as well. Oh, yeah. Kanagawa snapper rice looks fantastic. A mouth-watering close-up there. Michiba locked onto that in a taste test. And another one passes the grade and goes into the books. This is on Sakai's side. Both these men today at the top of their games. And here's the broth. Fukuzan! Yes! Yeah, right now what the challenger's ladling into the teapot is the global broth with a bit more soy sauce added to it. Back to you. All right, a touch of soy in that one. And now everyone in the stadium. All heck is broken loose in here. A little over two minutes left. And finishing up this one on the Iron Chef side, Kanagawa's force is in rapture, and no doubt about it, he is feeding off the energy. No let up. Fatigue not at all becoming a factor, and he has backed up his talk. On the other side, the Iron Chef has to be feeling some pressure from the onslaught coming from Kanagawa, and he appears to be just a bit tight there. Now less than two minutes to go. 
2001, the Chairman's Culinary Odyssey has brought us to this, the clean shave in Kandagawa, bringing it big time to the Iron Chef French. First battle of the new century, and no let up, as I said before, and no backing down either. GNI son? Yes, sir. The snapper rice looks great. Oh, without a doubt. That's the best way I like to have red snapper. Your favorite? Uh, yeah, I really love it. All right, hard to hear you. It's hard to hear myself. No let up with the crowd as well. Sakai's fans, they've been waving their signs all through the battle. Upstairs to his personal entourage. These folks are go. really into it. Now a minute left. The final 60 seconds of the 21st century battle. Kanagawa, no sense of urgency near the end. Washing his hands over there. Kobe, Morimoto, both caught up in the moment. And now, here's another awesome looking dish from the Iron Chef. And Kanagawa, he's done cleaning his knives now. <laughs> and even that with intensity. On the other side though, nope, Sakai not done, still in scramble mode. Turnips on snapper, the seafood around, a bit of sauce going down go. now, 30 seconds left. And Sakai still some work to do in the first battle of the new century. It's been a tester for him with Kondigo on the other side. And now, gotta believe the Iron Chef's done as he is waving, acknowledging to his entourage in the Royal Box. So just the finishing touches remain. To Five years ago, these two met, Sakai getting the win, but the stakes are sky high for this one. This is the one that counts. This is the one that's going to have an immediate impact at the dawn of the new century. The final seconds are ticking down, and that's it. The cooking's done. The 21st century battle is over. Incredible. What a performance, Sakai. And now, the moment of truth, tasting and judgment for the 21st century battle. On the panel today are actor Takanori Jinnai, actress Kumiko Akiyoshi, Sydney Olympics judo gold medalist Tadahiro Nomura, lower house member Nobutero Ishihara, and fortune teller Kazuko Hosoki. First, the dishes of challenger Kandagawa. Kandagawa is offering four dishes. First, a soup to enjoy his ultimate broth. The first time. Right. This is so good. Ah, feels good. This soup is chock full of ingredients, but snapper is definitely the center. Uh, I've never had anything like this. What is this? So good. Somebody tell me. That's what people would say after trying this. Second, what Judoist Nomura's been waiting for, carpaccio, finished by a beefsteak, tomato leaves, and anchovy dressing with fried snapper skin on top. You have garlic in this one? A bit, yes. I'd like you to roll them in the vegetables. Yeah, I was really looking forward to this one. Yeah. It was much better than I thought, and I finished all of it. Yeah. Yeah, no time. <laughs> the beefsteak tomato leaves add just the right taste. The way you use them in this is so unique and nice. I also enjoyed the dressing. This flavor is a first for me. Third, the salt crust grill with a mild flavor wrapped in the aroma of yogurt and sake leaves. The dip is also based on his borderless broth. Kandagawa cracking open the salt crust grill. The red snapper is stuffed with abalone and blowfish soft roe. <laughs> it looks almost sacred. So, Kaga-san, you ate this great every week? <laughs> I'm melting. Mm. He's yogurt in this, and I kind of wondered, but you know, it's totally wonderful. But you know, with the dip, it tastes um, completely different. Yeah, the flavor changes. I like it with it. I think it's a great idea to use yogurt for this. Sort of replaces the red snapper fat with something milder. Easy to eat, I think. He'll wrap it up with his red snapper rice, using, of course, his unique broth. It's served with the soup, made by adding his broth to traditional soup. The saltiness comes from the broth? Yes, right. I didn't add too much to it. I'm speechless. Yes, I've really. I've never hmm. had red snapper this good. Really. 
If possible, I really wanted to have a, a second helping of this. I could see some more of this. I wish I could have my parents try this too. <laughs> Excuse me, can I just say ditto? <laughs> Red Snapper is rather subtle, but he managed to crank out such gorgeous dishes with different expressions added to it. I'm impressed with what top class people can do, really, yes. I thought we actors have to be consistent, but I have to say I learned a lot from his dishes today. Cool. Now up the dishes of Iron Chef Sakai. He's offering four dishes with Asian ethnic touches. First, stewed snapper and soft roe, and fritter with garam masala spice mixed in, truffles on top, dressed with rape blossom sauce. Really, the batter is so unique. Those are there. Mm. This is totally different from what I thought. It's bitter sophistication. I love soft roe. It was delicious. Knowing Sakai-san's style, I can see how hard he's trying to create a new world. That's how I felt. Thank you, sir. The red snapper is great. I especially like the fillet. Oh, really? Yeah. Second, soup with rice cake, Iron Chef style, based on a luxurious broth made from grilled snapper and lobster. And third, Asian ethnic stew flavored with Korean red chili paste. The fried snapper finds a superb harmony with boiled cabbage in pursuit of new style French cuisine. And now Sakai doing the honors himself. This main dish is so dynamic. This is another great one. I didn't know red snapper goes so well with Chinese cabbage and clams all in one pot. And the flavor of the clams has penetrated the red snapper, you know, not just snapper. Mm-hmm. Sakai san, this is nice. Thank you, ma'am. But it would have been a bit better to add a touch of Vietnamese or Thai flavors to this. Just a touch of spiciness would make it better. That's just how I felt. You've got to challenge yourself knowing that you sometimes fail. And that's true in cooking, as in the case of judo. Without a challenging spirit, you can't win a gold medal. I really appreciated his challenging spirit in this. Yes, me too. Ditto once again. <laughs> Last is red snapper roll, rolled in sliced potato. Nampla was used in the process of marinating the ingredients. I made this sauce a bit spicy, which I believe you'll enjoy with the sweetness of the potato. This is so complex. It's spicy at first, and later the sweetness just spreads in my mouth. This is a first for me. This is such a bold attempt, I think. You're right. It really reminds me of Asia. <laughs> and I think the sauce, unlike the previous one, is quite straightforward. It's a very, very easy to understand flavor, this one. Yeah. I was impressed with the perspective. Looking to the other Asian countries, a very good effort. I really felt that. It was so good. Thank you. Beginning of the 21st century, which man makes a splash at the start? Kitchen Stadium opening its doors for the 21st century with a battle showing that seasoned chefs can explore and thrive in new frontiers. Kandagawa, a new look, a new man for a new century, creating a new type of broth. The king of iron chefs, Sakai, challenging himself as well, offering a new roadmap for French cuisine. It's all on the line now. Who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Kandagawa Toshiro! It's Kandagawa! He's beaten Sakai! They've had the intensity, the commitment, his ball, they all pay off. One of the greatest wins by a challenger in Iron Chef history, Toshiro Kandagawa, winning the 20th.
21st century battle. A tremendous accomplishment. The Kandagawa era begins today. And now the emotion coming to the fore. All right, let's check out the scores. Jinai, 20 to 17, the challenger. Akiyoshi, 20 to 19, the challenger. Nomura, 1918, the challenger. Ishihara, 1817, the challenger. Hosoki, 1917, the challenger. Unbelievable! A 5 0 sweep for Kandagawa. Complete domination. How could anybody foresee this happening against the King of Iron Chefs? Even Sakai applauding the iron will of the man who's beaten him today. Unbelievable, the first time Sakai has ever lost in a fish theme. And now Kandagawa to be presented with a medal from the Juno gold medalist, Tarahiro Nomura. And from the Olympic gold medalist, Kandagawa receiving the medal for his amazing victory today. Congratulations! And you can see the tracks of his tears of joy. But Kandagawa's eyes, his vision, bringing him a great victory. And now, we've got a second match coming your way. Yes, you know, it's going to be more than just a grudge match. Reporters from the U.S. have been dispatched here to cover the battle. Part 2, Bobby Flay, Masahado Morimoto, the tango in Tokyo. That's coming up!私の記憶が確かならば第2試合の挑戦者はアメリカ人であるその男の名はボビー・フレイ今ニューヨークでメイリストモリナンバーワンのスター・シェフであるそもそもボビーは去年ニューヨークで森本正春と壮絶な戦
。We're going home a winner、えー。それでは、えー、この一年間あなたの心の中に影を残してきた男を登場させましょう。<笑>さあ一人だけ蘇るアイアンシェフ。And now ascending to his rightful position in Kitchen Stadium, give him a warm welcome home, your Iron Chef Japanese Masahara Morimoto. Clay knows him well after biting the dust against him in New York. Morimoto's the man who spearheaded the neo-Japanese movement while at Manhattan's Nobu, which he left last fall in pursuit of opening his own restaurant this spring. So with the new restaurant coming, Morimoto's got a lot at stake in this rematch. Yeah, don't know. 威勢のいい発言の多い挑戦者その威勢の良さを正月ならではのこれにぶつけてもらいましょう60匹およそ100万円それでは発表します第2試合のテーマはこれです Another 21st century battle or rematch of one of our greatest battles a year ago in New York. Bobby Flay, who's maintained he was robbed last time against Masaharu Morimoto. Put up or shut up time for Flay. Issei Lobster for part two. Flay and Morimoto, the tango in Tokyo. Out of Kizen! Tango gone. Flay and Morimoto getting it on the second time in a slap of the hands between the two of the outset. The stadiums are rocking from the get go as the men up at the stand quickly loading up on live. He say lobsters, Japanese lobsters, filling their baskets to the brim, divvying up the 60 lobsters. A perfect theme ingredient for a New Year's battle, and the media interest in the U.S. for this one really peaking. Even Time magazine covering it, and the crowd in here going crazy. And Doc, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Well, how about these lobsters? They look fantastic. Oh, definitely top quality. About twenty、uh, thousand yen, or、wow. close to two hundred U.S. a pop. New、right、Year's、now. prices. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead, Ota. I asked our chef Morimoto about his feelings facing Bobby Flay again, and he said, "I'll just do my best." And as a message to Bobby, don't complain. About the battle, whatever the outcome, I won't say anything about the results if you won't. Let's just have fun with this reunion. All right, Morimoto, first comment, taking the high road there. Andrew Kusan? Yes, go. I also spoke with Bobby Flay,、yeah. asking how confident he was about winning this one, and he said, as long as the match is fair, we'll win for sure. He looks and sounds confident. All right, but、uh, the implication clear. The last one was unfair, and Flay hasn't passed up any opportunity to voice his view that he was shortchanged in that right, battle at Webster、right. Hall. Hey, Fukui-san. Yes, Doc. Can you check out what Morimoto's doing here? All right. He's dumping live lobsters into a huge sake barrel. Okay.、Uh, right there, and a number of live lobsters swimming in a barrel of sake. Wow. wow. Drunken instead of well, drunken prawns. We've、yeah. seen variations on this before, but with these big lobsters? Yeah. Well, with smaller ones like prawns, but this is a very bold move. Very. But if I may say so, I don't think they have isebi like Japanese lobsters in America. The difference, Doc? Well, they have regular lobsters, but they're a bit flat in flavor compared to the Japanese ones. Yes. After taste testing a piece of isebi lobster, Bobby Flay made that very comment, saying this is really good, much sweeter than American lobster. He loves today's ingredient. Good. All right. And now let's introduce our guest for this battle. First, actress Miho Kano. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. And Grand Sumo Champion Yokozuna Akebono. Honor to have you here, sir. Pleasure to be here. Actor Yuta Mine, nice to have you as well. Hello, great to be here. And of course, our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Welcome all. Always a pleasure. Theme ingredient: lobster. Mine-san. Yes. The word Issei Ebi reminds you of. Are you suggesting my wife's stage name? <laughs> okay, say what you want. Yeah, she's a strong woman.、Uh, but let's keep our minds away from that. <laughs> ah, she's out of my mind. <laughs> all right. Uh, now, Kusan. Yes. Yeah, I've got to follow up on those so-called drunken lobsters in the barrel. I asked Morimoto why he's doing that, and he replied, "The main purpose is to condense the flavor of the lobsters." But hey, it's New Year's, and I just wanted a big barrel of festive sake near me. All right, dual purposes for Morimoto, but the flavor condensing taking precedence. You know, if we can check out the challenger, he's boiling something. All right, I'm zooming in here. I think it's a mix of carrot juice and mango juice. Kusan, what do you have? Yes, that's right. In this pot are carrot juice and mango juice, along Ooh, with coriander.、Yeah. Bull 
bullseye, Doc. Uh, could you tell just by the color? Mm, I'm curious. curious. <laughs> it's actually pretty simple. I, uh, I just read the labels. Oh, that's good. Yes. Uh, from Iron Chef Morimoto's side this time, this, in this large, deep container, he's frying lobster and olive oil. All right. Shells there, maybe some meat on them, getting a light fry saute treatment. And I believe that's octopus he is slicing up there, is Morimoto. Cousin, yes, octopus and lobster pieces. All right. Okay, I see. The challenger is so bold in using his ingredients. This is almost refreshing to watch. So and, bold. And, well, this is the easy way. The way he sliced the corn off the cob with a knife was really amazing and quick too he was so bold in that i guess it's sort of it's the american style of cooking gotta be quick with only 60 minutes of cooking time yeah right and uh -huh. with one under his belt he should handle that time limit okay today and now over to morimoto's side in the is that octopus? Trays. yes here's an update on the ingredients in this container lobster olive oil raw octopus langoustine and abalone all right langoustine yeah long clawed prawns and also abalone Probably for a sauce. Oh boy, what a luxurious sauce it would be. With oh, this I could go for it right set. now. It looks so good. All right, hold on now. And uh, <laughs> Morimoto battling Flay. And we've got fans from both countries here today. And so, Akibono, which camp do you fall into? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I'm looking forward to the Japanese lobsters cooked by an American chef. Yeah. Not, not taking sides. <laughs> All right, champ. But the Americans up there, they're going to let you know which side they're yeah. on. Yes. I said Morimoto commenting on the 100 strong boisterous crowd on the American side today. Said, hey, I do this in the U.S. and the Big Apple all the time, so I'm used to it. That doesn't bother me. I'm committed to doing my best. All right, and if you remember Morimoto with his shuffle and the I can't hear you gesture, he reveled in it last time. Now on Flay's side. Uh, that's the corn, I think. Okay, yes. As Hattori-san just pointed out, these are corn husks on top of which he's placing corn and onions, which were uh, ground in the food processor, and then mixed with that are corn flour and shortening. Hmm. I wonder what these are. Perhaps to be steamed. And Kuzan? Yes, go ahead. I asked Morimoto what he thinks cooking will be like in the 21st century, what? and he commented that the Japanese love soy sauce and heavily depend on it when cooking, and that's why Japanese cuisine will never change. He said, I'm not going to use soy sauce today in order to challenge myself to search for a new direction. I wouldn't use it even if you threatened me. His mind is set on something new today. Won't use soy. And Mine-san, you ever had a Japanese meal without soy sauce? Uh, me? No, uh, never. I think so. So I'm right on my toes. We'll see how it goes. I'm curious, though. I wonder what Michiba thinks about that. Michiba Shiba-san? Yes. Uh, preparing Japanese food without soy sauce? What gives? Well, you know, some foreigners complain about the aroma of soy sauce in every single dish. So, so he's trying to offer a solution to that. So what do you think Morimoto will do? Replace soy sauce with salt, perhaps? Right. Probably mainly salt. And miso, too. Oh, miso. Too. miso. Mm. Yes. You can see the Iron Chef using a fry pan here for a mix of gorgonzola cheese and fresh cream. Gorgonzola. Yeah, it's an Italian blue vein cheese uh, made from cow's milk, of course. Of course. Now, Flay's side, they busted open a pomegranate oh, yeah. there. Look at that. Okay, yeah. Using a lot of fruit. Yeah, fruit juice as well being used. Who has the honey? Yeah, but yeah. does it uh, go with the lobster? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think they do, yeah. Great. Because the, the light taste of lobster uh -huh. matches well. Okay, and now what's he got in here? And now dumping a bottle, it looks American, and another bottle, is that honey? Hmm. Flay is loving it right now. <laughs> the way he does everything is so American. <laughs> And the crowd is enjoying this too, yes. As you just saw into the challenges bowl went a combination of mustard, honey, and horseradish, and that he's blending together as we speak. Oh, hmm. so you said horseradish. Mm. And and look, look, he's using honey again. All right, and now we're going to go over to the stands on Bobby's side of the stadium. His girlfriend is here, and we're going to try and have a few words with her. Abisan, if you're ready, go ahead. Okay. Fukui-san, I'm going to interview her. Yes. Today, so far, how do you think Bobby's doing? Oh, it's great. You were there for the previous battle. Any difference you see from the last time? Um, I think it's very well planned and they're all focused and they're working well as a team. Do you think he'll win today? Um, I hope so. We didn't come here to lose. Thank you. Let's hope he keeps it up. Back to you, Fukui-san. All right, thanks. And Bobby Flay would certainly want to make his girlfriend's day by coming away with the victory. Yes. Yeah, returning once again to the ingredients in the large container, the Iron Chef has lobster, olive oil, octopus, langoustine, abalone, brandy, white wine, water, that tomato puree, good. onions, carrots, tomatoes, thyme, and leeks, and absolutely no soy sauce. All right, and Doc's call on this will be used for a sauce. We'll follow it. Oh. And yes, folks, there he is, here for the rematch. <laughs> Tommy, the little boy, Morimoto's biggest fan. 
decked out in his kid size Iron Chef Japanese outfit. Tommy and his mother making the trip to Tokyo. They were there at Good Webster time. Hall. Yes. And about Tommy coming all this way, Iron Chef Morimoto thanks him for making the long journey to Japan. And then I quote, Tommy says that I'm his hero. Well, heroes don't lose, so there's no way I can lose this battle today. Uh, another play, Morimoto battle, and Tommy again, a source of inspiration for Morimoto. You know, this is uh, looking uh, really good here. Can we check out the challenger right now? I think this is oh, Kobe Oh, steak would do. You want it now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Some surf and turf from play, and now here's the crowd from Morimoto, and the Iron Chef can't but help react to it. Kuzan. Yes. The challenger's now using big, thick chunks of Matsuzaka brand Kobe beef. He ate some arriving in Tokyo three days ago, and he says he's cooked on it. At the chairman's expense, why and what's he doing? Uh, pepper, I think. Huh? Pepper. Oh? Pepper, not paprika? No, it's pepper, but it kind of has some sweetness to it and a very nice smell. All right, and there into the frying pan, the steaks go. Meantime, this crowd is ready to raise the roof in here. Wow! wow. <laughs> Incredible. And now they simmer it down a little bit. And here they go again, the, the chance for Bobby Flay. <laughs> Listen to this. Can get a bit of a rumble in the stands here. We've got dueling oh, chefs man, and dueling crowds. It's just crazy here. <laughs> man alive, we've still got more than half the battle left. <laughs> and now, Morimoto, a little dab of this will do him on the lobster pieces. I wish they show up for my bout in January. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> yes. Iron Chef Morimoto has just added lobster liver to this dish. Mm. Wow, that'll be awesome. And now what else? And for Kusan, yes. yeah, this white paste or sauce that you see spooning on here is a mixture of codfish soft roll strained through a sieve, broth and herring roll all blended together. All right, thanks, Ota. Wow, a lot of work's going into that. And for Kusan, one more thing. Uh -huh. On the other side, the challenger is deep frying lobster tails in this wok. Lobster tails he breaded in blue cornmeal. He says they'll open up later, and that's why he calls them butterflies. Wow, oh. that's kind of interesting. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. Take it. At this very moment, the Iron Chef is pulling the drunken lobsters out of the sake barrel. Oh, look at that. There you go. Finally. That is so clever. Coming out of there. They are more than just a wee bit tipsy there. <laughs> Completely. Oh, you can tell. Their faces are red. <laughs> oh, they were born red. Hey, I'm, I'm working with nothing here. <laughs> hey, hey, talking about the color of the lobster, the colors of the dishes on Flay's side are rather unique if you're used to Japanese cooking. Yeah. I've never seen this style of cooking before. Not with Issei Ebi. Yes. Challenger Bobby Flay was happy with everything until he saw the flame on his stone go out by itself. Then he quipped, you're doing this to me again. He seems to be getting more and more irritable as time goes by. Well, last March, he believes he was given an inferior setup. He was getting shocked from the equipment and now feels he's being sabotaged. Lighten up, Bobby. <laughs> Same side kind of go-ahead, and he ended up beating Sakai. The equipment is fine minutes. over there. And now, 30 minutes gone, 30 to go. It's round two. Play in Morimoto. The tango in Tokyo. Don't pick up that remote. second half of a grudge match between the former head man at Nobu, now ready to go out on his own, Masaharu Morimoto, and Mesa Grill owner head chef Bobby Flay, who's removing some Kobe beef steak surface charred there. Oh, it's burnt. Hope it's not overdone. The charring's from the pepper? I, I think so, yeah. It's, it's that color. Okay, now Morimoto lobsters on the grill, the sake-soaked ones, I yes, believe. Yes, on. These are the drunken lobsters that are being grilled whole over charcoal. All right, out of the barrel, onto the grill. It's been a tough day for these lobsters. <laughs> yeah, no time to relax. And now they're done with frying them. All right, Flay's side. So I wonder if he'll be grilling them further. Mm, they're looking fine, up close, split open like that. Yeah, I'm not oh. sure what he's trying to do, though. Mm. They're frying. All right, right, we'll go into the oven now. I do like the color, though. Very mm. nice. Lovely, aren't they? All right, let's go upstairs. Ota's with Tommy. Take it, big fella. Thank you very much. A big fan of Iron Chef Morimoto. Tommy is with us here today. What do you like about the Iron Chef? He's very good with knives. Hmm, okay. And the hat that you have on now, wasn't that a present from Morimoto-san after the New York battle? Yes. And of course, you want Morimoto-san to win today, right? 
Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thank you. Back to you. All right. The night before the first battle, Morimoto promised Tommy he'd win. He delivered. And now, what's Tommy's hero up to here? Oh, ah, so that's what it was. Yeah, it's for sticking them, the skewers, through the holes there. Hmm. Okay, skyward looking lobsters. Can't he do this at the last minute? I think he wants to grill them like that. Ah, mm -hmm. that, that would makes be something. Sense, yeah. Mm. The meat looks real good. Uh, Akebono, you're locked in over here, huh? Something a Yokozuna could sink his teeth into, right? Okay, okay, looking good. Not bad, Bobby-san. Oh, definitely. Fukuzan! Yes? Next to the meat, the challenger just finished slicing are fried peppers with sauce. That's the sauce which we saw uh, him mixing and taste testing earlier, made from mustard, horseradish, and honey, and mint leaves as well. That's the sauce that you see garnishing this dish. All right, oh. deep fried there. Now, if we can swing over to Morimoto here, I think he's making sushi right now. Whoa. Oh, wow. And Fukuzan! Yes? The sushi rice on the Iron Chef site is a normal mix of rice, vinegar, and sugar. Got it. And I saw the challenger sandwiching the steak in between the lobsters and then piercing a skewer through it, right? Hmm. All right. And um, oh, there you go. Akibono, being from Hawaii, as you are, any words of encouragement for uh, Bobby Flay, your compatriot? Hi. Mr. Hey. Flay. Hey. Good luck. Relax. You. Take your time. All right. Some big support from Yokozuna. And doesn't take much to set him off, does it? <laughs> and Flay looks to be near completion with this one and using a lot of spices over there. Fukuzan! Go ahead. Iron Chef Morimoto, observing Bobby's way of cooking, said, with all those spices, he's killing the subtle taste of the Japanese lobsters. I'd think twice before doing that. Mm. <laughs> okay. Temperature is starting to rise a little bit in here. And Fukuzan? Yes? Bobby Flay, responding to what he's seen on Morimoto's side, said, looks like he's under a lot of pressure after seeing Sakai go down. Then grinning, he said, ooh, losing two in a row would be such a disgrace. Well, of uh, course, you knew it was going to start going, get going sometime in Sakai Green having the favorite from Flynn. Yes. Yeah, a moment ago I told you about Iron Chef Morimoto Sushi, which I reported was plain old regular sushi rice, but I was wrong. I found out he had prepared the vinegar by soaking the shells of the lobsters in it, so the aroma of the lobster has been absorbed by the vinegar. Back to you. Hmm, the essence of lobster in the vinegar there. So the sushi rice itself will have a touch of lobster flavor too, is that correct? I believe so, and he's got sashimi as well. Oh, it's going to be great, isn't it? Oh, it looks so nice. It really I does. like this, it's great. Lobster roll sushi. Mm. I tell you, Mount Waters, just thinking about it. Now, 15 minutes left. Where's the time gone? This has been zooming by, and this crowd's been wired the whole way. The energy level in here is off the meter. They haven't let up for a moment. And it's their enthusiasm which will carry Flay and Morimoto to the finish, the fourth quarter of the battle. Flay plating another one here, and still, he's been very much under control the whole way, though he's in a must-win for him, Lobster Showdown with Iron Chef Japanese Morimoto. Okay, now, take a look at this. He's frying his what? sushi. I, I can't believe this. Huh? He's like an American chef. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Deep fried lobster. Ota, what's the word? Let me confirm with you the ingredients in this fried sushi. Of course, the sushi rice that we mentioned a moment ago. Lobster meat and the batter, which is made from flour, cornstarch, baking powder, egg whites, and water. All right, got to figure a roll of the dice here by the Iron Chef. But again, he did say no soy sauce today. And you couldn't have conventional sushi without soy sauce. And now here on Flay's side, the top's off. And yep, the one with the husks, the corn husks, the steamed one looks to be done. And the crowd in here for the <laughs> tango in Tokyo. Flay and Morimoto, the folks have been waiting for this almost a year. And there is no holding them back now. <laughs> this might turn into a real battle, huh? <laughs> this is for <wild. laughs> Ten minutes to go. All right, ten minutes left, and Morimoto getting one close to being done. And fans now up on their feet. Even the other Iron Chefs getting caught up in the fever without a doubt. This is the wildest it's ever been in here. Now, Morimoto, he's using white truffles, I think. All right, some paper-thin shavings there. Yeah, definitely white truffles. Yeah. And the, the volume in here, Doc, my head's pounding. I, I didn't have anything to drink last night either, but I feel like I got a hangover. <laughs> now, Morimoto, go to The Iron Chef has raw lobster meat underneath these shaved flakes of white truffles. Lobster and truffles, Morimoto loading up on the luxury quotient. Lobster truffles, mm. Mm. There's no dish for that, actually, or no name for that dish, but okay. the lobster's been cured with an edible kelp. Hmm. Nice. Okay, See. right here. So that would add some more flavor to it. A flavor enhancement uh -huh. act by the Iron Chef. 
And Flay back on his side, finishing touches to the housed he's not in only husk told, he's creation. He's got sensitive touch as well, doesn't he, huh? And yeah, he's got the corn husk there, right? And that's the steamed item, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a Japanese dish as ah, yeah. is. yeah. You're right in appearance, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So definitely a Japanese touch there. Yes, Ota. Yeah, let me quickly review the ingredients in the corn husks. They are corn and onions ground in the blender, that, corn that flour and shortening says? all mixed together and steamed. Then on top, he has added several pieces of boiled lobster. Mmm, delectable looking lobster. Oh, and it was boiled. Just perfectly. Oh, yes. You did it. Perfect exactly right. Timing. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, listen to this. Well, they're singing now. The old steam song. Have you ever experienced anything like this before? This is a first. Wow. Well, this is so exciting. Huh? Yes. Let me also confirm the ingredients. The Iron Chef has combined on these plates. He has salmon roll garnishing one piece of lobster meat. Then he has another piece of lobster on a shell smothered with lobster liver and the sauce that was made from strained codfish soft roll, broth, and herring roll that we saw a little bit earlier. And to go with the lobster cracker, oh, he's added sweet done. chili sauce. Back to you. Thanks, so Oto. Honestly, I couldn't catch it all, though. It's deafening in here, but I can tell you there are five minutes left and Tommy and Mom right there upstairs, Morimoto's side of the Royal Box. Can the Iron Chef pull off another Babe Ruth-like performance and come through once again for the kid? Five more minutes to go in the battle. We shall see. And there's Tommy leading the cheers upstairs. It was last March 28th when Morimoto came away with the win over Flay. Since then, Flay's been anxious for a rematch. Bobby-san is quite ahead. He's already finishing up a lot of dishes right on schedule. I'm getting worried about Morimoto-san. Flay's closing in on completing all his dishes with minutes to spare. Has a clock right in front of him there. Hmm, he's almost done, I think. I think you're right, partner. Kusan. Yes. About the sauce or the dip for the Iron Chef sushi, he has kept his promise not to use any soy sauce and has instead created a sauce using gorgonzola cheese and fresh cream, which is now being ladled on. Whoa. What? Whoa. The unconventional. Oh, okay. His sauce or dip for his deep fried sushi, and now some miso, I believe, being put down there. Oh, it looks like it, yeah. Okay. Kusan. Yes. We heard you were worrying about Morimoto's pace, and I asked the Iron Chef about that, and he just brushed me off saying, I'm not behind at all. Bobby's the one who's rushing too much. I don't have to rush when I know I'm on a winning pace. He's <laughs> <laughs> so confident. Sounds good. He's come in right at the finish so many three times before. Okay, three minutes left. Okay, now check out the Iron Chef. Now, this is what he's been stewing for a long time, just like an American uh, sauce almost. You were dead on with it. Yes. Yes. Yep, go ahead. Here's the final review of this dish. Lobster, olive oil, octopus, langoustine, abalone, brandy, white wine, water, tomato paste, onions, tomatoes, thyme, and leeks boiled in a pot and now being strained. Pounding it through the strainer, some hustle with ah, muscle. It's so thick! Should be great. So, you know, it's almost like a bisque. Uh, a lot of flavor of lobster condensed into, into that sauce. Okay. And now, Flay bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> Down the hatch over on that side. <laughs> His assistance to it. He's enjoying it now. All of them. <laughs> Is this wine? No. No, no. Sake for the men on this side. <laughs> and Morimoto now with charcoal sticks. Char boiling it, uh huh. Gonna be Issei lobsters in the full shell, but it's getting late in the day for that. Yeah, how much time does he have left to do this? Hmm, now there are less than two minutes to go. And on the other side, let's get over there, Bobby Flay. Yep, raise the roof, and Bobby looks like he is done. Go. You can see Bobby Flay is done, and he's all excited. I asked him whether he was going to stand on the cutting board again or not, and he just said, hmm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, <laughs> put some money down. He won't. Go ahead. I told Morimoto that Bobby might be thinking about climbing on top of the cutting board again, and Morimoto said, never, ever do real chefs do that kind of thing. I'll show you what real chefs do. I'll show you with my creativity and my dishes. Well, Flay said he got caught up in the moment when he stood on his cutting board last time, said it wasn't planned, later acknowledged it wasn't the most exemplary act, but the damage was done, but I don't think we'll see him One do it today. To All right, a minute to go, the final 60 seconds. Modi Moto is scurrying, again? scrambling, trying to tie it all together. Last minute decorations on his dishes, huh? His fans, Tommy included, urging him on to the finish. It's a done deal on the other side. The first battles of the 21st century in Kitchen Stadium. What a double header we've had for the lid lifter on the new century. And Flay chucks the cutting board. Now he's up on his kitchen counter. Oh 
A provocative move given what happened before, but his fans are in culinary ecstasy. I don't know if, yep, the Iron Chef, it was in his face, and he gives a shake of the head, disbelief, disgust. Bobby Flay, what can you say? Two seconds to go. Finally, he's off the counter, but once again, controversy at the Five end. Seconds. Round two, Flay Morimoto, Three, this tango two, in Tokyo. The one. final seconds are ticking down, and that's it. The cooking's done. The 21st century battle rematch between Flay and Morimoto is, everybody, over. Oh my, yes. how wild in here in kano -san. it's the loudest. Yes, <laughs> it really is. It was like a fireworks festival or something. <laughs> All right, let's hear from the men. If you're ready, Abe-san, go ahead. Thanks for the 60 minutes of hard work. I know you're quite excited right now. Do you think the outcome will be in your favor? I hope so. I hope so. We wanted to make sure that we didn't step on the cutting wheel because I didn't want to offend Morimoto this time, so we got rid of the cutting wheel this time. So you proclaimed your victory without stepping on the cutting board, but can you really win? Uh, we're very happy with what we have, so we'll just see what happens. In the last uh, battle, yes. you we'll told game. Bobby yeah, never to step on the cutting board, mm. and you were mad. Well, same thing, no this difference. This time he didn't actually step on the cutting board, instead mm. he threw it away. Same, same, same. What do you say to that? Hey, you chop food right here, it's the same thing, with or without the board. Right, right. Mm. So against Bobby, do you oh, I like him? <laughs> <laughs> Will you beat him? I'll win. All right. Now the moment of truth, tasting and judgment for the second 21st century battle. On the panel are actor Yuta Mine, actress Miho Kano, Grand Sumo Champion Yokozuna Akebono, U.S. Embassy Officer Christopher J. Lafleur, and culinary critic Asako Kishi. First, the dishes of Bobby Flay. Flay is offering five dishes. The first one is a spicy marinated lobster dish, flavored with a unique combination of coconut and chili oil. Fresh hot chilies. Fresh hot chili. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Great. Good. Good. It's really good. The hot chili added is just right. The coconut milk and avocados. Help make this dish milder, suppress the hotness. This much spice, yet the lobster speaks out. Quite skillful. Second is lobster fruit salad using pomegranates and mangoes. Tasters should enjoy the harmony between the Japanese lobster and tropical fruits. And third, lobster tamale, taking a typical Mexican dish, rearranging it by using Issei lobster. It's wrapped in corn husk, but uh, don't eat the corn husk. <laughs> when I first tried this, I thought this was a bit too flowery. Yeah, and uh, how do you say, uh, not as good as uh, the previous one. Mm. He uses a lot of spices in his dishes, but with the corn in this one, it gives my taste buds a little break. Well, American people maybe similar to Japanese people, always uh, wanting rice uh, all the time, you know? To, for Americans, corn is the main thing, and it matches very well, I think, in this. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, by using his own ideas, he was able to create a new dish based on traditional recipes. This brings back memories. Mm, is that yeah. right? Fourth, the fried item battered with blue cornmeal. Bobby calls it butterfly. The sauce made from carrot and mango juice heightens the flavor. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> surprising but good. Mm. Oh yes, just as I expected. But it is a luxurious way of using it, and so bold. Of course, we Japanese would think twice to use it in this way, because of the price. You know, it's very expensive. Yes, but I think he has given new life to this lobster. I think you're right. We may be preparing things too easily. Yes, mm. using only ah. limited traditional recipes. In that sense, this dish is quite good. Last is surf and turf, matching Matsuzaka Kobe beef, which he became enamored with in Japan, and Japanese lobster. It's also spicy. 
The sauce is made from horseradish, Dijon mustard, fresh mint, and honey as well. Like miso and vinegar sauce. I thought so. Because of the mustard. Mm, yeah, right. there's something familiar. But the more you eat, the m more you taste the mint. And there's honey also, too, yes. isn't there? I believe this contains the flavors and techniques of contemporary cooking. A lot of work went into this. However, it is still a very traditional American type of dish. He studied a lot about Japanese ingredients before coming here, I assume. He matched the champion of beef and champion of seafood. Nice. <laughs> After eating this, you'll probably vote for Bobby, right? Uh huh? Oh, Bobby, Bobby. No, no, no. <laughs> He was very bold in using a first-time ingredient, and he was so skilled in preparing the meat just right. Very nice, I think. Thank you for a um, very good uh, dish, and hope you good luck in the future. And Thank you very much. Hope you good luck. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks for having me. to the dishes of Iron Chef Morimoto. The Iron Chef is offering four dishes. First, grilled lobster, the one soaked in sake. They're enjoyed with a simple splash of citrus juice and a dash of salt. Morimoto will do the honors himself and seems pleased at the result. I start off by offering you the original flavor of today's lobsters. Mm, about 30 minutes. Actually, I was planning to soak them until they die, but I had to get on with it. <laughs> hey, it's New Year's. I'm going for it. <laughs> Wonderful. Looks <laughs> so good. <laughs> Great Japanese flavor. Thank you. This is absolutely great. Mm. Oh, so good. The citrus juice is so great, you know. Mm. You can't eat American lobster after this one. Mm. Yokozuna, you're already Japanese, have yep. voice. With pleasure, I might add. <laughs> Morimoto, I want to say. <laughs> Next, an appetizer with three items beckoning spring. Morimoto used white truffles, caviar, and soft roast sauce, taking a pass on soy sauce. Such luxurious flavor. And eating truffles with chopsticks is great. <laughs> bobby -san's dishes were, of course, all cooked on a stove, so perhaps because of that, I'm enjoying this raw dish. It's refreshing and it's wonderful. Well, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ask me difficult questions. You know? <laughs> Third is his deep-fried sushi rolls, which everyone's waiting to try. The dipping sauce is made from gorgonzola cheese and exojohn Chinese paste. This is the first time to have tempura sushi. Mm. Am I right? After all the years of being on this show. Well, it has raw lobster in it. Really? Good. <laughs> Good stuff. I like it. <laughs> How come it goes so well with rice? I mean cheese. I'm having this for the first time. I made it for the first time. Your invention? First time. I know this is sushi inside, but the gorgonzola goes, so well. goes well. Yeah. This is some kind of magic. You don't yes. need soy sauce for this. I know what you mm, mean now. Yes. You can eat three plates of these. No problem, no problem. <laughs> but you're still on your first. This is my second one. <laughs> it is a second. <laughs> well, you want this one, right? <laughs> Last is bouillabaisse shabu shabu. Baked mochi and thinly sliced lobster meat will be dipped into a luxurious seafood combo-based broth. He has three types of sauces, including maitake and lobster liver flavor sauces. Try the first bite without the sauce to check it out. Oh, the first one. Yes. 
The soup has a lot of lobster essence. Oh, this is so good. But it tastes unfamiliar, though. I didn't use soy sauce in this either. Ah. Now, a soup as good as this one, I hate to waste it just as a dip. It's really very nice. I want the soup alone. Yes. When I was watching him making this, he was throwing everything in, and it, he appeared so bold and careless and even a bit American in style. But, you know, the flavor is... Totally Japanese, isn't yes, it? Yes, Japanese. Yes. The, the soup is awesome, bro. It's really good. Yes. The 21st century will be the age of fermented seasonings, soy sauce and miso. Is this a deliberate statement against that, or is it just your crazy, challenging spirit? I really can't tell. <laughs> I saw such a contrast between the two chefs right from the beginning. Morimoto-san reminded us of the um, old simple fashion while frying sushi. That was so amazing. Play Morimoto Tango in Tokyo. Who will dance out of here with the win? Our second 21st century battle, a rematch of last year's Webster Hall duel. Bobby Flay trying to salvage his pride at the same time changing our perceptions of Japanese lobster with his spice treatment. Iron Chef Morimoto pulling off the unthinkable, a soy sauce free course in his lobster dishes. Conditions identical on both sides of the stadium. There will be no excuses after today. Who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Bobby Flay! to be stunned. Iron Chef's losing both ends of the 21st century battle doubleheader. Flay coming 8,000 miles to even the score against Morimoto, and he's done just that. And despite the rough spot at the end, the two men embrace. All right, let's check the scores. Mine, 18-17 for Morimoto. Kano, 18-17 for Flay. Akebono, 20-19 for Flay. Lafleur, 17-14 for Flay. And Kishi, 17-15 for Flay. Four to one. Flay takes it. He can go back to Mason Hall and hear congratulations instead of what happened. And now the winner will be presented with a medal from Yokozuna Grand Champion Akebono. Thank you very much. And no denying a lot of heart for Bobby Flay and a lot of class, Masahara Morimoto. And Flay all smiles now. As is his girlfriend, but not Chairman Kaga. No, the Iron Chef's dropping two in a row to start the new century. Morimoto and Sakai. Hopefully they'll have another chance here. But if it is the last, it's Bobby Flay's day.